Yeah. Rotation, revolution, seasons, and time zones. Um, all of these things you guys have covered before, and we're going to cover them today just to make sure that we're confident about them. So rotation, we know, is the spinning that goes like this. It's what causes days, um, and it's what causes what looks like the sun moving in the sky. Um, every planet has different rotations, um, and ours rotates 365 times in a year, but it takes 24 hours for us to get back around. Um, and that's why we have days and nights. This is also one of the reasons why we have time zones. All right, revolution on the other hand is different than rotation because revolution is the time it takes for the object to go one full orbit or distance completely around the sun or whatever else it's going around. So earth takes 365 days to go around the sun and the inner planets have shorter revolutionary periods than the outer planets. Why? Why? They're closer to the sun. Because they're closer to the sun, right? It's like running on the track. If you're running on the inside lanes of the track, then it's less distance than if you're running on the outside lanes of the track. Okay? So it's the same way for planets. And that is one of Kepler's laws. Okay? So mm -hmm. equal areas and equal time um, is a part of that. And it says that the, the farther away a planet is, the slower it's going to revolve. Now that brings us to aphelion and perihelion. Aphelion and perihelion, basically, like, let's take the words and break them down. Helio or helios means sun, okay? And so aphelion means when the, sun, when the earth is the farthest away from the sun. It doesn't have to be the earth, it could be anything. When it's at aphelion, it's the farthest possible away. And that's because we rotate in, uh, or we revolve in an ellipse, okay, with the sun at the foci, okay, or a focus of the ellipse. How many of you guys learned about ellipses in geometry? Yes, or circles, right? And then the focus is the spot in the center. So for an ellipse, there are two to make it be balanced, and the sun is at one of them in this particular type of ellipse. Perihelion, on the other hand, is when the earth is nearest or whatever the planet is is nearest to the sun okay now that happens during our winter in the northern hemisphere but it happens during summer in the southern hemisphere ophelion and perihelion have absolutely nothing to do with seasons it's just when it happens to be for us okay um there's no impact of ophelion and perihelion except for if we reach back to the last unit and we think about the parallax effect because aphelion and perihelion give us the biggest distance between where we're seeing constellations so we can see if other stars in the sky are moving okay so while we learn about it in this unit that's actually most useful information for the last unit all right so remember that in an elliptical orbit you've got your major axis which is where your foci are okay that's the plural for focus um, you do not have to remember the other words, but you do need to know that in the ellipse, what goes in the center? The sun. Yeah, the sun is in the center, and what's on the outside? The planets, the earth, whatever. The same thing works for the moon, for example. What's in the center for the moon's revolution? The earth, and then the moon is going around the outside. That has a different name, though. Instead of helio, like instead of aphelion and perihelion we call that apogee and perigee good all right so exactly that when it's the earth and the moon perigee is when the moon is pretty close to the earth and apogee is when it's away okay and aphelion i don't know why that is so there um aphelion is when the earth is farther away from the sun all right so as we saw in the video, we have seasons not because of our distance away from the sun, but because of the tilt of the Earth's axis. And remember, we learned in the last unit about precession, right? That we sort of wobble on our axis, okay? When one hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, the hemisphere is experiencing summer, and when it's tilted away, the hemisphere experiences winter. But the Earth is always on a tilt, okay? Some planets have much bigger tilts to their axes than others which is why there are some planets that actually rotate like this instead of like this. Yes? Um, do all planets have seasons? Does whatever that Jupiter have seasons? So all the planets um, who, that have a tilt have seasons. Yes, because if you have a tilt, then you're adjusting which side of you 
it's going to be there. Now, your seasons could last a different length of time than our seasons. But yes, any planet that has a tilt is still going to have seasons. All right. Now, atmosphere also affects how we experience seasons. Right. And not all the planets have the same kind of atmosphere that we do. All right. So equinox and solstice. Equinox is equal night, like Knox, like from Harry Potter, right? Like Knox means to make the lights go out. Okay. Equinox means equal night. And when it's equal night, um, if the night and the day are equal lengths, then um, that means that we're probably going to be right at the beginning of spring or right at the beginning of autumn. Okay. And so, um, that happens twice a year, usually March 20th to 23rd and September 20th to 23rd. Okay. They're either called the vernal equinox, which basically just means spring, um, because V E R in like Spanish, French, Latin, right. It's all green. This is for the coming of spring. Okay. Um, and, or, um, it could be the, that shouldn't say autumnal solstice. That's, um, it's the fall equinox. Uh, there's an autumnal equinox. And then solstice is when the sun reaches its highest or lowest point in the sky at noon. So winter solstice, which is around December, right before the holiday, like right around holiday break every year, we have winter solstice, and that's the shortest day of the year. And summer solstice is the longest day of the year, and that usually happens in the middle of June. Anybody have questions about equinox versus solstice? Um, I have a question about the veil. Are there any planets that like don't have any tilt? We are going to get to the planets when we get to the solar system section, so hang on to that question. Um, any questions about this? Yeah. How do you tell the difference between like the... An yeah. equinox yeah. and a solstice? Mm -hmm. So equinox is when there's 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime. Solstice is when there's a lot of hours of daytime and less hours of nighttime or vice versa. But that sort of depends on where you are on the planet. So if you're on the equator, at an equinox, you will have 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime. But if you're at, say, the North Pole, okay, at the, um, at the summer solstice, you could have light all day long. And the sun would never set. Right? Or at the South Pole, vice versa. It would be dark all day long. And that's why if you've ever seen movies or talked um, to people who have lived in places like Alaska or far up in Canada, then they have really long nights, okay, or really long days during certain times of the year. And that is because of how the tilt affects all of this with the solstice um, and the equinox, okay? So solstice is when um, the uh, sol or sun is high, on one or for one or the other of the hemispheres and equinox is equal night. Yeah. On Alaska at like 10 p.m. it'd still be bright outside? Yes, absolutely that can happen. It depends on the time of year. So that happens in the summer. But in the winter, it could be 11 a.m. and still be dark. Go ahead. Which is a little crazy, right? Um, so it just sort of depends on where we are. And that also helps to explain a little bit why we get ice caps in places like that, right? because you spend so much in the dark and without getting all that extra heat because you're tilted away from the sun for such a long period of time, it lets the ice build up there in a way that it builds up in, in other places on the earth during different times of the year. All right, so we've talked about this before, but let me just refresh everyone's memory. So we have time zone because the earth rotates, good. So because we have different daylight hours at different times, we create time zones. And this is because it was fine when we were walking or on horses, but once trains came along and they were going so fast, no one knew what time that a train was ever going to get somewhere because it was every town had their own time based on when the sun was highest in the sky and then they just called that noon. Well, that doesn't make sense when you're trying to make a global scale, right? Or when you're trying to make a phone call. Has anyone ever tried to make a phone call to someone who lives in a different time zone? Right? So a lot of you have, okay? And it can be really challenging to figure it out. I remember when I lived in France, I made my parents these wall clocks and I wrote my siblings' names across each of the tops of them because all three of us lived in different time zones and we didn't want our parents to try and call us at the wrong time, like in the middle of the night. Um, so we had to like put up little clocks to remind them when to call. Um, and so time zones 
Our 15 degrees each, that's 360 divided by 24 for the 24 hours in a day, okay? And each time zone is about an hour in length. They're based on lines of longitude, and we use Greenwich Mean Time, where the prime meridian lies, as our center point, okay? 24 time zones, each an hour long or 15 degrees of longitude, okay? Um, and so we've done this a little bit before, and we're going to review it again next class just to make sure you have it in your heads. All right, so that takes us to the end of that section. Um, does anyone have any questions about rotation, revolution, time zones, or seasons? All right, good. Go ahead and stop.